In this section of the course, we're going to focus on the topics presented in laboratory exercise L70 and uh, our upcoming homework assignment, which is assignment A23. In both of these um, exercises, we're going to look at the metadata of files. Uh, generally speaking, met metadata is information about files. So the metadata comes from the file system. For example, file name, file extension is something um, as an attribute attached to the file. So this allows us to identify uh, the file, uh, possibly try to understand what is the type of file it is. Ad additional examples of metadata is could be file attributes. For example, a, far, a file could be marked hidden or read-only or system file. Uh, also timestamps such as when the file was created, when the file was modified, and when the file was accessed by the user. So all of these uh, 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 different types of information are extremely important in our investigations. So we're going to start uh, get started with laboratory exercise L70. So our first step in this laboratory is to launch autopsy and uh, reopen the forensic case investigation. So I'm just switching to my autopsy, which is already, uh, already running on my machine. So open um, an existing case and uh, I'm opening the forensic case. So we'll be focusing on um, the metadata that comes from images, uh, MIME types, which are basically internally recognizable types of files such as PDF, JPEG um, and other types of files, uh, archives um, and others. Uh, the possibilities that involve mismatching uh, file extension, for, for instance, uh, a text file with extension .txt or .txt uh, may be actually an executable file or an image. Uh, which uh, typically would have an extension uh, JPEG or PNG or sometimes a PDF. So uh, some files uh, could be encrypted and uh, encrypted files could be um, Microsoft Office files, uh, uh, encrypted archive files, but also files that are encrypted by special type of software, for instance, such as TrueCrypt. All right, so we're going to continue analyzing our case. Of course, there's a link to this scenario. And um, in our previous uh, laboratory, Lab 60, uh, we have already uh, uh, executed these um, ingest modules, the hash lookup, file type ID identification, extension mismatch, and so forth. And um, uh, of course, so the EXIF uh, uh, information as you already know from the training videos, comes from uh, images and typically EXIF information is captured by uh, uh, software such as uh, Photoshop that stores information about the actual editing um, uh, parameters uh, when the multimedia file was created or most typically by uh, phones or digital cameras. So we're going to take a look at uh, information available uh, as EXIF information from different types of uh, media files. Of course, uh, we also executed email parser, which makes sense to look for information specific uh, to uh, email communication uh, in, in this case, because there was a ransom note sent by email, possibly there was more exchange um, with the uh, perpetrators. Um, and the correlation engine is also needed so that we can correlate the information from one case to another case, which will be interesting to observe how autopsy is capable of um, alerting uh, an investigator about files uh, that were already encountered uh, bec became uh, seen in other cases. So let's take a look at the metadata uh, processing results which uh, we should be able to find uh, in the tree, of course. Uh, autopsy is very easily uh, re uh, organized in, in its structure. So under results, um, subtree 
of the tree uh, that we have. Um, this is where um, uh, many of these modules uh, uh, generate and uh, um, create items to um, give us information about the data extra extraction results uh, in processing our data sources. So this is EXIF uh, metadata. And of course, if you recall, we have already um, added some uh, some of this uh, uh, tagging uh, of our own. But uh, these are the files that actually do have information uh, specific to EXIF. Of course, EXIF, for instance, uh, uh, gives us info regarding the types of devices that were used to capture uh, the the images uh, to take the photos. So um, the let's uh, maximize this view so that we can see what kind of information is available. So there's device model and there's device make. There are two of these. Okay. So this is uh, really good. Uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the pictures where the capturing device allows. Uh, uh, storing information about uh, geolocation. Um, they, of course, include this uh, uh, long, uh, latitude and longitude coordinates. And so we can uh, project these coordinates to the map and uh, create uh, possible information about uh, a report about uh, movements of suspects. So in our case, uh, the question is uh, um, if uh, there were uh, specific devices used to take the photos. So devices are listed under uh, device model and make. Uh, so let's just uh, uh, focus specifically on device model. And uh, there is one picture taken with uh, iPhone 7 Plus. Okay, and uh, that's the picture right there. Um, and uh, I can resize this. Uh, Samsung Galaxy S8. Okay, so you be able to see if if this is present here. I don't see it on either device make or model, so it doesn't doesn't seem to be present right here. And uh, blue R1. So we're just asked to report some statistics on regarding how many photos were taken with specific cameras. So again, sometimes it's easier to organize by device model. Sometimes it's easier to organize by device make uh, to sort. Of course, remember, you can click on the column header. Um, uh, clicking it the second time will uh, allow you to sort in uh, ascending and descending orders. From the views area, find the archive file that is named archive.zip. Okay, so we're just switching to the views area and uh, then uh, switching to uh, file types. And the uh, file extension is just the original file extension. So if we can um, extract it here. Uh, file extension is the original file extension which may or may not match um, the actual uh, file content. Uh, but um, uh, since we already ran this extension mismatch detector, we also have a true indication of MIME types. All right, so we can basically look at uh, both sides. But let's uh, first take a look at the archives. Okay, so this is the listing of archives that I'm clicking by extension under uh, views, file types by extension. And uh, looking for archive.zip, so there is a file like this present right here. Okay, so this is a zip file. And uh, since this is just the location of the file by its extension, based on the database results of a topsy case that we have been uh, processing since we added the data source, um, it's always um, a very typical function to uh, right click and jump uh, to the original file location uh, in a specific directory wherever the file was created or copied to by the user. Okay, so here we realize that this is our path. So we have the address bar that indicates the path uh, to this location, or you can of course see the tree. So now we're, we're just looking under 
our image there is a volume number seven which contains partition with specific uh, uh, file system uh, right here and we, as we scroll down under program files okay and under um, under a certain level of subfolders uh, we have um, uh, the assets uh, su subdirectory uh, with 84 uh, items in there and the archive.zip is placed in this folder 